Hey guys, welcome to Elevated Systems. I'm your host CJ and this video may be deja vu for some of you. I just uploaded an After Effects video yesterday. Well, long story short, I messed up and tested the stable version of After Effects instead of the M1 native beta version. And because of that, some of my conclusions were misleading. However, it turns out they weren't completely wrong. So I've retested and re-edited the video it's essentially the same, just with the appropriate corrections added. So today we're going to continue looking at the new base model M1 Max Mac Studio and its performance in the content creation workflow. Today we're going to be specifically looking at how it performs in a couple of real world projects in After Effects. If you haven't seen the first few videos in the series, I created a playlist and you can find a link in the description. Feel free to check them out at your convenience and be sure to hit that subscribe to catch the full series on the Mac Studio. But right now let's jump into After Effects and this time I am using the latest beta version of After Effects which does run natively on Apple Silicon so no Rosetta 2 translation. Now I'm going to be working with two different After Effects compositions and if you saw my After Effects on the M1 Mac Mini you'll recognize the projects because I'm using the same ones. In fact I'm basically recreating that video just on the Mac Studio. I even cut and pasted a lot of the original script. I mean, work smarter, not harder, right? And full disclaimer, these AE projects are not my compositions, meaning I didn't create the projects from scratch. I got these from Envato Elements. Now, they're not a sponsor. It's just a site I use to get good quality stock images and video footage, audio tracks, and in this case, a couple of logo reveal intros I've used in my videos in the past. But to be honest, since switching to DaVinci Resolve for my editing software, I haven't used After Effects as much as I used to, as I can do most of the basic stuff I would have normally done, like simple motion graphics or basic 3D infographics in Fusion. However, for the rare occasion where I need a little more complexity, I still go with AE. This first composition has a moderate level of complexity for a logo reveal. It's a six second 4K clip in total and the main composition consists of about 60 layers within 16 sub comps. There are five pre-rendered video files and 12 solid materials for compositing, masking and overlays using several different modes and track mats. I was able to import my logo easily, position and size it. I was also able to easily not only edit the main output controls, but also tweak things inside the sub comps such as colors, strokes and shadow thicknesses, layer styles and animation keyframes to give the logo more of a 3D look without using actual 3D extrusions. Viewport performance was good while working in sub comps and I could see the changes I was making in nearly real time. Main comp RAM preview did work and rendered in the timeline at about 3.5 frames per second at half resolution, 5.7 FPS at a third, and 11.4 FPS at a quarter res. Using the Mercury GPU Accelerate Renderer, the project rendered in 2 minutes and 11 seconds, using just the Mercury software render added about 14 seconds to the render time. The second project is significantly more complex composition. It's a 15 second HD clip consisting of over 170 layers and 40 sub comps. There are 12 pre-rendered media files and almost 30 solid materials used. It's basically taking everything from the previous project and adding multiple instances of extrusions and then keyframe animating the extrusions on multiple axes. Animating an extruded 3D object in 3D space is what makes this project more demanding on a computer. Again, working in the viewport at half resolution was okay. Working in sub comps, I was able to make changes to position, scale, colors, mat tracks, and keyframes, and see those changes in the viewport relatively quickly. RAM playback was much better than expected with playback between 2 and 4 FPS at half resolution. Again, I rendered the composition using the hardware acceleration and this one took 31 minutes and 6 seconds to complete. That time increased to 34 minutes and 19 seconds for software rendering. For reference, these render times were over 11 and 14 minutes faster than using the non-beta After Effects version. 
Now, just like with DaVinci Resolve in my last video, I'm comparing the Mac Studio to my $6,000 production workstation PC to determine if this is gonna replace this. So using the same Samsung T5 external SSD, I open the project up in After Effects on my PC and without making any changes to the comp, I added to the render queue, set the output to lossless AVI, hit render, and the first less complex project rendered significantly faster on the PC with a hardware output time of one minute and 35 seconds and the software render time of one minute and 33 seconds. The second project did not perform as well with a hardware render time of 43 minutes and 20 seconds and a software render time of 57 minutes and 46 seconds. Of course, like I said in my previous videos, while render times make great benchmark charts, a few minutes difference one way or the other on render times isn't gonna make or break my decision. It's mostly how the actual experience is working in the project and for the simple logo reveal, the two systems performed about the same. There was very little lag when editing individual layers and sub comps. RAM playback was about the same at each resolution. I couldn't really say one system was better than the other working with that simple project. However, loading up the 3D logo reveal and the difference just started to show. While editing the project in the Mac, everything was very smooth and changes were reflected in the viewport in pretty much real time. RAM playback was between 6 and 3 FPS regardless of the resolution, while on the PC, everything was choppy and a bit more awkward. There was considerably more lag when editing layers and sub comps. RAM playback was as low as just north of a half a frame per second and never got above 3 FPS at a quarter resolution, which a quarter res isn't ideal for a 1080p project. Now, not everything was better on the Mac. Because this is the base model with just 32 gigabytes of memory, After Effects, as it likes to do, will gobble that up quickly, and the keyboard shortcut to purge memory will be your friend to avoid freezing up the system due to no available memory. Now, this isn't unique to the Mac. After Effects will eventually eat all the RAM you give it. It just takes longer if you have more. So, after retesting everything on the optimized M1 native beta version, my two points on After Effects on the Mac Studio still stand. First, while there has been debate on the word optimized in the comments of my previous videos, when it comes to After Effects, the whole Adobe Creative Suite, to be honest, is better optimized on Apple Silicon than on PC. Premiere Pro, Photoshop, and After Effects just work better on this Mac than they do on any PC I've tested them on in the past year. And second point, the difference between running those apps natively on the M1 systems and the more updated Intel versions as opposed to the Intel versions through Rosetta 2 last year is night and day. Now, this was just two relatively quick projects and your workflow may differ, and obviously optimizations in rendering have been made, but in just working in the projects, I really couldn't tell the difference between the stable and the beta versions of AE running on this Mac Studio. It's weird to me because I left Premiere Pro for Resolve because after decades, Adobe just never could fix their software to consistently work on PC. There were always problems, incompatibilities, crashes, things that worked one day when it worked the next, but in about a year, they got it to work better on what is essentially brand new architecture. And because of all of this, I'm gonna give the Mac Studio the win here, and that's 2-0, which isn't looking good for my Threadripper workstation, but After Effects just works better on the Mac. Of course, you can do better on the PC side. A faster CPU like a 12th gen, at least eight core Intel CPU, and more CUDA cores like an RTX 3080 or better will outperform this Mac Studio, but not for the price, size, or power efficiency. So if you're a casual or sporadic After Effects user like me, then I'd say this $2,000 base model is a good option. But if you're a heavier AE user and it's more significant part of your workflow, a better option would be to upgrade to 64 gigabytes of memory for the RAM heavy application. And that's pretty much it. Short and sweet, but hopefully informative. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below and be sure to hit that like to get this out to more like-minded people. Again, the full playlist is in the description below or just click on it here and I'll see you in the next one.